All right, it's finally time for that review. One month later with the Leica Q2. Is this my new everyday carry camera? Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Desmond. I make content for creators that want to take better photos and shoot better videos. And it has been a while since I've uploaded a video. And honestly, I've been a little bit busy, but I've also been spending a ton of time with my brand new camera. This is the Leica Q2. And I wanna talk about whether or not this is worth buying in 2022 compared to a lot of the other more modern options out there. All right, now before I jump in, just take a quick look at this beautiful camera. And the one thing I wanna say about this is this isn't a very practical everyday camera or a everyday purchase for a lot of people out there. For the most part, this costs about $5,600, almost $6,000 after tax. So let me just say that for most of you, Spending six grand on a point and shoot camera is not really the right choice, but I'm gonna talk about my experience, why I bought this, and some of the pros and cons of this camera compared to say some of the other ones in my lineup. All right, with that said, let's jump right into my review. So if you're taking a look here, the build quality on this is absolutely gorgeous. The main body is machined out of a single piece of metal. And then here you have incredibly tactile, all metal buttons, you've got your shutter here listen to that satisfying click you also have a beautiful little corner dial here i have this set to exposure compensation but with a press of the button you can change that to iso and with a long press you can actually customize what this dial adjusts so that's really nice especially with a camera this small that is so limited on buttons and we'll kind of walk through that in a second so looking from the top down we have our on off button also our shutter button here and that's mostly it this is very clean so you've got these three mechanisms up top and that's really it all right so moving around the body like i said everything is made out of metal except here you've got a texturized rubber kind of finish on the metal gives you really nice grip again though this is a pretty small camera so it's tough to kind of get your hands around you don't feel as secure for me, I purchased an extra little piece. It's called a thumbs up. It just gives you just a little bit more grip, gives you somewhere to place your thumb, feels a lot more secure. And then moving on to the bottom of this camera, right? So, so one of the things that's really nice about the Leica Q2 over the original is that the Leica Q2 uses this SL2 type battery. So take a look at the size of this. It is an impressive size battery. What they say is it's rated for about 370 shots, which is actually pretty good considering the way that I shoot with my Leica. I'm a lot less trigger happy with my Leica Q2 than I am with my A7R4. So I think 370 shots usually last me at least a day and a half. I rarely have to charge this battery just because of the way the Leica forces me to shoot. I'm a lot slower, I'm a lot more careful, and I think about my shot a lot more before I hit that shutter button. What you'll also find is a quarter 20 mount. Great for screwing on a tripod or a tripod mounting plate. Only challenge is any plate is going to obstruct your battery lever door and your SD card door. So that's a bit of a pain. Speaking of SD card doors, this is really well built. It is all metal. You've got your SD card in here. Honestly, they probably could have fit two SD card slots in there, but whatever. The other nice thing though, is that all of these doors and compartments are sealed. So you have rain and dust and other weather sealing on this. Leica, which is really, really nice. Don't dunk this thing in the water, but take it out in the rain, take it out in the snow, have fun with it, don't be too worried. And I mean, that's one of the things you're paying for, right? The construction of this is incredible. This thing is built like a tank. So I'm really confident that this, as a daily driver, is going to be able to handle regular wear and tear. The metal, sure, is going to patina and age really well, but if you've heard any stories of Leicas, these are cameras that you pass down to your kids or your grandkids. They really, really do last the test of time. And it's because of the way that they're built and the materials that they are built out of. Moving to the back here, like I said, the Leica has a pretty simple button layout. We've got three buttons here, play, function, and menu. And you've got a simple D-pad and everything else is operated by this touchscreen. 
The nice thing about the Leica Q2 specifically is it really is just a pick up and shoot camera. I have most of my settings here set to auto. So I've got auto ISO. I just adjust my aperture and my shutter speed. Everything else I let the camera take care of. But because of the simplified menu system, because the experience is very different from say my a7r4, it's really easy for me to just turn this thing on, not really worry about getting the perfect shot and just kind of shooting and enjoying what I'm doing for the day. Okay, so moving on from the body, let's talk about the lens that is on the Leica Q2. So this is a 28 millimeter 1.7 Sumalux lens, and it is absolutely gorgeous as you would expect from something this nice. The M version of this lens, the 28 millimeter 1.4 Summicron, is about a $7,000 lens. And I would say this is built very similarly, right? This is an all metal construction, has these beautiful tactile aperture ring. You've also got your manual focus. If you want to switch this into manual focus, you can easily do that. Look at that really beautiful manual focus mechanism. And another thing that this lens has that the M version does not is macro mode. So take a look at that. Now I have a much closer minimum focus range. This thing captures beautiful macro photography, which is really nice. It's almost like two lenses in one. So you are getting a very beautiful, beautiful lens. It goes without saying that image quality coming out of this camera is gorgeous. It has a 47 megapixel sensor, the same one you would find in the SL2, or at least the same underlying technology. And then take that sensor and you pair it with this gorgeous lens. And honestly, the images are incredible. One of the things that I have noticed about the Leica images straight out of camera versus say images coming out of my a7R4 is that they are punchier, I hate that word, but really they have a lot more contrast. They have a lot more saturation straight out of camera and they are capturing colors and light closer to real life. With that said, anything can be adjusted in post-production. So I'm not saying that like, Leica images end up looking better than my Sony images. It's not necessarily the case. They just have two different flavors. So there's a different characteristic that comes out of the Leica than comes out of my Sony straight out of camera. Obviously with a little bit of work in Lightroom, you can get things to look relatively similar, but there is a different characteristic. All right, and one other thing that really, really surprised me is the video features of the Leica Q2. Like I mentioned in my unboxing, right? This thing shoots 4K, up to 30 frames per second. I usually shoot in 24 FPS. You can also shoot up to 120 FPS at 1080p, which is still pretty good. The nice thing is this lens has built in image stabilization. So that's really, really helpful, especially with the 28 millimeter lens. I really like that focal length for video. So for me, shooting really nice 4K B-roll is very easy. Colors coming right out of the Leica Q2 for video look great, right? There's no log, so you can't really do too much post-production. I shoot in that cine 4K mode, which brings the contrast down a bit, gives it that really filmic look. I think it looks fine right out of camera. I just give the footage a bit of a tweak and you know, it's ready to go on social. So the other thing I will say though, it's like, I'm not using the Q2 to shoot vlogs. I'm not using it to shoot uh, too many things for YouTube, but this thing is great for just on the go video capturing, shooting product videos. I shoot little bits and pieces of B-roll for social or for different brands. It's actually really, really nice that the video capability isn't terrible. Okay, so what have I learned from having this Q2 for the last month? Uh, well, the first thing is I don't regret the purchase. Honestly, I started this YouTube channel because of how much I love talking about photography gear, filmmaking, and just buying and using cameras and all of the different accessories that come with that hobby and this profession, right? So no, I do not regret spending money on a beautiful camera like this. The other thing is that I found that the Leica Q2 falls into a very unique gap that I haven't been able to fill with other cameras, right? The first thing is the size. This is a very small camera. Form factor, even with the thumbs up and the lens hood, makes this a very, very easy camera to carry around 
for daily use to toss in a simple and small sling bag. And that alone has made me take more photos, has had me bring this camera around more often. And the other benefit of this particular camera is the shooting experience. I'm having a lot of fun just documenting what I think a lot of people would consider mundane or regular occurrences in my life, but it does enhance the experience of taking photos on the daily. And really that's one of the biggest pros of this camera is it makes the photo taking experience just really, really nice. It's not heavy, it's not large, it doesn't get in your face or other people's faces, and it still has the capability to take these beautiful, beautiful photos. But the downsides of this camera, and there are many. So first of all, it's the price. I think for a lot of you that wouldn't spend the kind of money I did on a camera like this, that is the biggest con. $6,000 for a point and shoot, a tiny camera like this, does not make sense for a lot of people, and I would recommend against it. But you can get a lot for $6,000. You can get a ton of camera from Sony, Canon, Nikon. You can get beautiful lenses. You can really kit out an entire studio. You can do a lot with it. That's one of the most obvious cons for a lot of people out there. Wasn't that big of a con for me. But I'd say the biggest con for me is the autofocus system. And look, I know there are probably Leica shooters that are watching this that are saying historically, the Leica system hasn't always come with autofocus, right? It's a manual focus process. That's all a part of the experience. Well, for me coming from Sony, for example, with one of the best autofocus systems in the game, it is just hard to get used to how slow this autofocus system works. Um, it does work fine though. And like I was saying earlier, it does force me to slow down. I don't shoot photos as quickly. I'm not as like trigger happy when I'm shooting with this camera. So I am a lot more intentional and I do focus a lot more on composition, but maybe that's a good thing. It's making me a better photographer, slowing me down, making me more intentional about the photos and the composition and the lighting and the focus points that I'm using to get that perfect shot. Another con, and I think it'll come with anyone going into the Leica system, is that accessories, batteries, anything you want to add on is going to cost a pretty penny, right? The battery, an extra battery is like $275. For this, 370 some odd shots per battery. Just stomaching the cost of getting an extra battery so that you've got when you're out and about is a tough pill to swallow, right? Like little accessories like this, the thumbs up. The official one that comes from Leica is about $250. But again, I kind of knew what I was getting into. Everything is expensive half cases, straps. Um, this is a luxury brand and so the creators of these accessories price them accordingly. That's probably one of the biggest cons and again going back to my original cost. And the other downside of this particular camera is this non-interchangeable lens. The 28 millimeter is a gorgeous wonderful lens. It's very close to one of my favorite focal lengths 35 millimeters but if you wanted to get a little bit closer, if you wanted a telephoto shot, if you want something with a little bit more background compression like an 85 millimeter, you're gonna have to use a different camera, which is the case for me a lot of the time. So when we go out on a day trip, I will carry this with me in my sling bag and then right next to it, I will have my A7R4 with like the 85 millimeter Batis, which I think is a perfect combination, right? You kind of have your 35-85 type of duo, but it's a 2885. But when I need the autofocus, when I need the speed of my A7R4, I just pull that out and use it instead. So I am in a way stuck with two bodies sometimes, and that's totally fine with me. I mean, I've always historically traveled uh, and done trips with two bodies. I usually bring an A7R4 and an FX3, but now I kind of bring this instead of the FX3 because on the go video is perfectly fine. I don't vlog a lot. Anyways, I know that was a long video, but there was a lot of information to get out there for you. If you guys like this content, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe and I will see y'all in the next one.